Okay, so I'm going to take a look inside this ECU from a BMW Mini R53 um, in preparation for doing some, some things with it later on. Uh, first of all, I'll go over the, the label on the front um, and go through the things I believe that I've I, I found out about what the all numbers are. So I believe this, this first number up at the top here, this, this is the firmware revision number for inside. Uh, when I go inside, I'll explain exactly what the firmware revision uh, it refers to. Um, underneath that, uh, there's a serial number, which is unique to each uh, ECU. And then you've got the VIN number of the vehicle in which the ECU came from. The next number down uh, is, I'm not exactly sure about this, this particular number, so this is the only one that I'm really not sure about. I think it might be the vehicle model reference number, but I'm not sure. Next down is the hardware number, and then below that is the software number. Uh, some of these labels are uh, the ones I've put on there for my own reference, and this one I think is just a, the person that sent it me from eBay. I think they just put that on there as a warranty seal, but I've broken that anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then uh, over here, um, if uh, if you look at this this bit here, so in the middle, it's the same as the hardware number, which is there. So that's just, I think this is a Siemens label up, up here and this is a BMW label down here. So BMW put like vehicle information there and Siemens have put uh, their own uh, label referring to the, the hardware number and the, their firmware revision which, which they put inside. And then this label, this number here I believe is the uh, Siemens part number for the device. And then here, over here finally is the uh, date on which it was manufactured. Okay, so I'll open up the ECU. I've already undone the screws. There's uh, four screws which go around the outside. And then when, once you're in, there's two more screws which hold the boards down together. So there's two, two boards in it. And it's quite neat because it opens up and it, it supports itself like that. So I'll go over the bottom board first. Um, so this is the main ECU down here. Now I've looked at the spec sheets and this it seems to, the part number seems to suggest it doesn't have an internal ROM in this particular part. And that's good news because it means we don't have to guess what program's going on inside there. Uh, and then we've got the memory here. This is a flash memory. It's uh, four megabit, which is 512 kilobit. So, uh, kilobyte, sorry, and um, when I use MPPS to download the ROM contents, that's 512 kilobytes in size. So when we're downloading the, the ROM contents, I believe that we're getting the full content. Now we're doing it via a, a, another microcontroller, and that microcontroller may be blanking out bits of the data, or so even though we're getting the full contents, it's possible that some of the data may be missing, but I'll, I'll, look, I'll look into that a bit later. Okay, so as I move around, so, uh, over here, this one is um, the RAM chip, so it's got 8K of RAM in, in there, and that's volatile memory, so nothing's stored in there. Um, and then over here, this is the, a knock sensor interface, so it has a knock sensor there. Uh, and then over here um, is a 5 volt regulator, so this pro provides the power for all of the chips on, the, on the, both boards. And then finally over here, uh, this one is the uh, injector driver. So that powers the fuel injectors on, on, the, uh, on the car. And it's got a 8 megahertz clock there. And I, I think that's ramped up to 25 megahertz when it drives the actual main ECU there. So there's no, apart from the flash memory here, which seems to be programmed fully and read fully from MPPS. There's no other programs, being, data being stored anywhere on here that I can see. Oh, and incidentally, there's a, sorry, there's a final chip over here, and this is the data, a data interface, and this chip, uh, it looks like that drives the K line uh, for, for the communications with the rest of the vehicle. So there's, there's two communications, there's K line, and then there's the uh, CAN interface, and, the, and this microcontroller itself supports CAN itself, so the CAN communication comes from there, K-line comes from that chip over there. So I'll turn it around. And this is the top the top board. Okay. So on, on this board, just uh, swap my notes. Uh, so over here, 
we've got um, these are the uh, in, uh, ignition coil drivers so it only has two even though it's four cylinders so what these do is uh, one the one drives cylinders one and four and the other one drives cylinders two and three for the ignition coil so the coil pack when you look on top of the vehicle has two coils on it so and it just switches between those so one is always on and every time it switches and sparks the other one it just switches back and forwards uh, then over here this um, this chip controls the uh, throttle motor so that's the, the throttle butterfly in the car uh, it's it's possible some of these chips drive other things as well but these are the things that I've discovered uh, and this is a, an analog multiplexer demultiplexer so this interfaces analog signals uh, with microcontrollers um, and I'll start I'll go all the way across the other side for now uh, so this one is an H bridge driver well that's what the chip indicates but I, I, it's a bit confusing because what seems to go to that chip is the knock sensor and the lander sensor and I don't I don't know why they go there it, because they go to the, it seems to go to the outputs of there and they sh uh, so either that's labelled wrongly or I'm not understanding something at the minute but um, I'll, I'll look into that in future it's not really important to me right now and then on this chip down here there's uh, some bi-directional line drivers it, it appears uh, so just to interface with the between whatever they're driving and the uh, microcontroller uh, then th this is uh, a second microcontroller. Now I don't believe this actually does anything with the uh, car itself but I think this microcontroller is used to program the memory on the main microcontroller and I think that th that's all this does so it's responsible for doing like the MPPS kind of communications with the flash RAM uh, and so and this chip is a CAN interface chip so the other the main uh, microcontroller has a CAN interface itself so I think this CAN interface is associated with this microcontroller and it controls uh, reading and writing to the program ROM so in the factory they can write to whatever version of software and things they need into the device and they can read, read it off as well so that's, that's good news because so th this is the only device which contains ROM which contains actual physical programs and I believe that's what the revision number on the top of the uh, of the of the ECU refers to there's because if you look at the ECUs they have lots of different kind of revision letters L M and N and and other ones as well I've got a feeling that refers to what the actual version of the code is in here uh, but I'll look into that a bit later as well um, so that's so that's really good news because I hopefully I'm not going to have to second guess what's going on there because hopefully it's only to do with reading and writing the actual program memory onto the ECU and it's not going to affect the operation of the ECU itself uh, but there's still a lot to look into but that basically covers uh, what's in the ECU and how it works and well, once you go through it it's not too bad and there's data sheets available for most of these components it, the, the components that are really difficult to get data sheets for are these these kind of driver ones which um, uh, seem to don't seem to have uh, freely available data sheets.